Horrifying. The United Arab Emirates has been invaded by a swarm of insects. Something remarkable happened in the just concluded fast of Muslims at Mecca. A swarm of insects attacked Mecca, the holiest land of Islam causing many people to feel scared because of this. Many people consider it a prophetic sign, while others think it's a miracle. What does it truly mean? Does it have any relevance to the descent of God? Before starting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button, and press the bell to receive the latest information from Kaaba and the world. Locusts invaded Mecca, the holiest site in Islam. Mecca is the holiest site in Islam because Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was born in Mecca. And it is toward this religious center that Muslims turn five times daily in prayer. It is expected that all devoted and able Muslims attempt the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. Also, the Great Mosque of Mecca, known as the Masjid al-Haram, is home to the Kaaba. The Kaaba, the Black Cube, is the most sacred site in Islam known as the Sacred Bait Allah, House of God. It is located at the heart of the Sacred Mosque, Masjid al-Haram, in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is believed by Muslims to have been built by Abraham and Ishmael. It is one of Islam's holiest sites in the direction of prayer for all Muslims. Every year during the Ramadan season, many people come to celebrate and partake in the fast. So why would locusts invade such a holy site? It is a question in the heart of many. This is because in Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and Buddhism, locust infestation is considered a sign of judgment or punishment. The Bible and the Quran, the holy books of two of the most followed religions on earth, have described and referred to locusts as menacing and strong creatures that bring misery to those facing its wrath. So, is this a sign of punishment or judgment in Mecca? Muslims online believe it is a miracle. What do you think? Is this a miracle or a sign of punishment? In the Quran verse 133 of chapter 7 says, So we let loose upon them the flood and the locusts and the lice and the frogs and blood, all explicit signs, but they were too arrogant. They were sinful people. Here the Quran says it's a plague. First, it talks about the flood. Videos of flooding in Mecca have been circulating the internet, which you can see here. Torrential rain accompanied by hailstorms and flash floods in Mecca, and now locusts. Yet they say it is a miracle, but the Quran says it is not a miracle. It even says the people were arrogant and sinful. When God was dealing with Pharaoh, he told him in the book of Exodus chapter 10, verse 4, If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. You already know the story of how Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go, and one of the punishments God brought on Egypt was an invasion of locusts. Exodus chapter 10 verse 12 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt so that locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. In the Bible, the book of Nahum chapter 3 verse 15 says, There the fire will consume you, the sword will cut you down, they will devour you like a swarm of locusts, multiply like grasshoppers, multiply like locusts. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 38 says, You will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little because locusts will devour it. This, in fact, 
establishes that locusts have been known to wreak havoc for a very long time. The visitation of locusts is not something to celebrate or a miracle. It should be a time of reflection. It is a warning that something is wrong. Now, this isn't the first time that Mecca has been infected with some type of bug. Just a couple of years ago, in 2019, a locust actually infested the site. Here's a video from January 14th, 2019, that shows a swarm of what appears to be locusts descending in a flurry on the Grand Mosque in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The flood is a warning, and the locust is also a warning. Even the Quran says that. And the fact the flood happened while the pilgrim was ongoing, and at the end of the fast, locusts invaded these places, really calls for a sober reflection that something is wrong somewhere. And then, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 3, the Bible says, Then locusts came down to the earth out of the smoke. They were given the power to sting like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass on the earth or any plant or tree. They could harm only the people who did not have the sign of God on their foreheads. If these locusts were to invade somewhere else, Muslims would have agreed that it is indeed a warning or a judgment. But since this is a holy site and a holy month, they will never agree to that. God is sending humanity a warning, irrespective of their religion, to turn away from wickedness and follow the Lord. Jesus paid the price for your sins. There is no denying that there are many different beliefs and religions in the world, each with its own set of teachings and practices. In the Bible, locust swarms are frequently mentioned as symbols of God's wrath and judgment upon nations. For instance, the book of Exodus narrates one of the most famous plagues where God sends a devastating swarm of locusts to Egypt as a form of punishment for Pharaoh's refusal to free the Israelites. Exodus 10.15 describes how these locusts devastated the Egyptian lands by consuming all plant life in their path demonstrating the extent of destruction such swarms can cause and serving as a drastic measure to compel Pharaoh to release the Israelites from slavery. Similarly, the prophet Joel uses the imagery of a locust plague to warn of impending judgment and to call for repentance. In Joel 1, 4 and 2, 11, locusts are depicted as a harbinger of the day of the Lord a time when God's judgment would be manifest upon the earth. This devastation wrought by locusts invites reflection on human frailty and dependence on divine mercy. Moreover, the book of Revelation, which focuses on the prophecies about the end times, mentions locusts in a metaphorical sense. Revelation 9, 2, 10 describes a terrifying scene where locusts that emerge from the bottomless pit are given the power to torment those who do not bear the seal of God on their foreheads. These locusts are not ordinary, but possess qualities likened to battle horses with crowns of gold, faces like men, hair like women, teeth like lions, and tails with stingers like scorpions. Such a vivid description underscores the severity of the end times trials and judgments. Connecting these biblical accounts to present-day occurrences of massive insect swarms in the Middle East, we can be sure that the last day is here. Oh, the believers of Lord Jesus Christ, God's judgment does not end here. In August 2023, the city of Mecca, the heart of the Islamic world and a beacon of faith for millions, was subjected to nature's ferocious wrath in a storm that could only be described as apocalyptic. The sanctity of this revered place was pierced by howling gales and torrents of rain, bringing an unforeseen chaos that upended the spiritual tranquility of the city. The sky above Mecca darkened ominously, as if for a warning of the impending cataclysm. Then, without mercy, the storm unleashed its full might, gale force winds exceeding 80 kilometers, 50 miles per hour, tore through the city with a force unseen in years. Their power, echoing the roar of a thousand beasts, 
the air thick with desperation and fear, carried with it the stench of upheaval. Lightning, a lethal artist, painted the sky with its electrifying brilliance, striking the iconic Fairmont Mac Clock Royal Tower Hotel in a display of sheer terror, illuminating the night in a ghastly glow that seemed to herald the end of days. Pilgrims caught in the merciless grip of the storm while performing the sacred tow-off around the Kaaba found themselves pitted against nature's fury. Heavy rains pummeled them, reducing their solemn ritual to a struggle for shelter as the rain-slicked floors of the Grand Mosque turned treacherously slippery, threatening their safety with every step. In the wrath of the storm, Mecca's streets transformed into tumultuous rivers, claiming the city under a siege of water. The neighborhood of al recorded a staggering 45 millimeters 8 in of rain within a mere 24 hours, subjected areas to flooding where the lifeblood of the city seemed to pulse with the turmoil of the deluge. The scene was catastrophic with vehicles stalled and abandoned, and citizens seeking refuge from the wrath of nature that enveloped their city. The parallels to the devastating 2015 storm, which caused significant loss of life and injury, and collapse of the TR of the Grand MOS were inescapable. The memory of such destruction lingered in the air, a silent testament to the storm's potential for calamity. Yet amidst this maelstrom, there were no immediate reports of casualties, a small mercy in an event that seemed to carry the weight of judgment. The National Center for Meteorology, warnings of further tumultuous weather underscored the precariousness of the situation, with forecasts predicting more rain, wind, and thunder. The storm that besieged Mecca in August 2023 was not merely a meteorological phenomenon. It was a dire reminder of the destructive power of nature, leaving an indelible scar on the heart of the sacred city and those who endured its rage. Furthermore, the storm itself is very unusual. The intensity of the storm highlighted by gale force, winds exceeding 80 kilometers per h, 50 miles per hour, and the significant amount of rainfall, 45 mm or 1.8 in, within 24 hours is highly unusual for Mecca. The city is situated in a desert region where such heavy rainfall is not typical, indicating a deviation from the norm. This heavy downpour led to flooding in some neighborhoods, showcasing the storm's severity against the backdrop of Mecca's usual climate. Not to mention Saudi Arabia's climate, predominantly desert, features extremely dry and hot conditions for the vast majority of the year. Occasional rains are expected. However, the severe nature of this storm, with its potent combination of wind, lightning, and torrential rains, highlights its aberrant nature. The region does experience seasonal variations, often with rainfalls between November and January, making a heavy downpour in August significantly out of sync with typical weather patterns. There is no doubt about it. This is God's wrath. This is His judgment. His words can give us wisdom into the depth of the situation. In the book of Jonah, we read about the city of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Nineveh was known throughout the ancient Near East as a place of great sin and wickedness. The people of Nineveh were corrupt and had turned away from worshiping the one true God. God decided that Nineveh's evil had reached a point that required divine judgment, so he called upon the prophet Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn the people to repent and turn back to God or else face destruction. However, Jonah did not want to obey God's command. He was afraid the people of Nineveh might actually listen and repent, and he didn't want them to be spared. So Jonah tried to flee from God's presence by boarding a ship headed in the opposite direction. As Jonah's ship sailed across the open sea, God sent a great storm to churn the waters. The storm was so fierce that the crew feared their ship would be torn apart and sink in the midst of the raging tempest. The sailors realized Jonah's disobedience was the cause. They threw Jonah overboard, hoping to appease the raging storm, but 
God God was not finished with Jonah. As Jonah sank beneath the towering waves, God provided a giant fish to swallow him whole and keep him alive for three days and three nights. Jonah remained in the belly of the fish, repenting and praying to God. Finally, the great fish vomited Jonah out onto the shore. God commanded him again to go to Nineveh. This time, Jonah obeyed. He went into the city and warned the people that in 40 days, Nineveh would be destroyed unless they repented of their wickedness. To Jonah's surprise, the people of Nineveh listened. They fasted, put on sackcloth, and turned away from their evil ways. Seeing their genuine repentance, God relented and spared the city from the destruction he had planned to bring through the powerful storm. This account shows how God is willing to use the forces of nature, like a massive life-threatening storm, to get the attention of a wicked people and call them to repentance. When they responded rightly, God showed mercy and withheld the judgment that the storm was meant to bring. But that is not all. More destruction is coming at the end time. The prevailing scientific consensus and empirical evidence strongly indicate that the future will see an increase in the number and intensity of natural disasters, exactly as the Bible has foretold. NASA's Earth Observatory has agreed that the increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere will probably elevate temperatures across most land surfaces. This temperature rise is linked with an increased risk of drought and a surge in the intensity of storms, including tropical cyclones with higher wind speeds and more intense mid-latitude storms. The decrease in the temperature difference between the poles and the equator, a direct result of global warming, could reduce the overall number of storms. However, the intensity of the storms that do form is expected to increase due to a more humid and hotter atmosphere fueling their development. This scenario forecasts more extreme cycles of droughts and floods stemming from a single large storm as opposed to several smaller ones. The Royal Society corroborates the findings from NASA's Earth Observatory, emphasizing that Earth's lower atmosphere is becoming warmer and moisture due to human-induced greenhouse gas emissions. This shift provides more energy for storms and certain extreme weather events, subsequently making events like heat waves and extremely hot days more likely. Consistent with this, heavy rainfall and snowfall events heightening the risk of flooding have become more frequent. The report also highlights that as Earth's climate has warmed, more frequent and intense weather events have been observed globally. Scientists often categorize these events as extreme if they are unlike the majority of similar weather events that occurred previously in the same region. APBS report that floods will likely become more prevalent due to higher temperatures causing increased levels of evaporation. This process leads to denser clouds that hold more water, eventually resulting in heavier precipitation. DRC levels, another consequence of melting glaciers, will further exacerbate flooding in coastal areas. The report also touches on other disasters, such as storms, which are expected to become more powerful due to the same mechanisms that increase the frequency and intensity of floods. Finally, the United Nations Environment Program UNAP underscores that over 90% of natural disasters are weather and water related, including drought, aridification, wildfires, pollution, and floods. Climate change is pivotal in altering the hydrological cycle, which increases the frequency and intensity of these events. But do not be afraid, brothers and sisters, for God uses hardship to test us. Among the many powerful narratives woven throughout the tapestry of sacred scripture, few shine forth more brilliantly than the timeless tale of Job, a story that eloquently illustrates how our loving sovereign God will at times use pain, suffering, and adversity to test, purify, and ultimately strengthen the faith of his most devoted followers. Job was a man of unwavering righteousness who feared the Lord and shunned evil, blessed beyond measure with immense wealth, 
a loving family, robust health, and the favor of the Almighty. Job's life exemplified the reward that comes to those who walk blamelessly before God. Yet, despite his exemplary piety and obedience, the divine trial that would soon befall him would push his faith to the very brink. At the prompting of the accuser, the Lord granted Satan permission to strip Job of his earthly treasures, his beloved children, and even his physical well-being. In the face of these cataclysmic losses, Job could have shaken his fist at heaven and renounced the God he had so faithfully served. Yet, even as he wept bitter tears of anguish, this stalwart saint maintained an unshakable trust in the wisdom and goodness of the Almighty. Naked I came from my mother's womb, he declared, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Though his friends sought to convince him that his suffering was punishment for some hidden sin, Job adamantly insisted on his innocence, his unwavering faith refusing to waver even as his mortal frame was racked with unimaginable pain. Through it all, Job clung to the belief that the Lord, in his infinite wisdom and mercy, was working all things together for a greater purpose, and so he persevered, his trust in God's sovereignty growing ever stronger even as his earthly circumstances grew increasingly bleak. At last, when Job had been fully tested and refined, the Lord restored to him double the wealth and prosperity he had lost. Moreover, he blessed Job with new children and declared, You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful, James 5.11. This timeless tale reminds us that even in our darkest hours of trial and tribulation, our loving Heavenly Father is ever at work, using the fires of adversity to purge away the dross of our faith that it might emerge radiant and pure. For the Lord disciplines those He loves, that we might share in His holiness and inherit the promises He has prepared for all who trust in Him. So let us take heart, dear brothers and sisters, and cling ever more tightly to our unshakable hope in the goodness and sovereignty of our God. For He is faithful, and His mercies are new every morning. Though we may pass through the darkest of valleys, we need not fear, for He walks beside us and will one day restore to us the fullness of joy that awaits all who endure to the end.